Amen. There we go. Let's give God a hand clap. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Father. Matthew chapter 10. I started last week. Um, I started last week. I didn't I didn't really get to get into the text. I scratched the surface a little bit. So hopefully I can finish where what I started, where I started. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And the Bible says, And he called to him twelve disciples, and he gave them authority. Amen. He gave them authority over every unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The Bible goes on to, to name those 12 called disciples. Uh, and then it says here in verse 5, it says, These 12 Jesus sent out, instructing them, uh, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim, as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think the interesting and beautiful thing about the text is really just the place where uh, Jesus begins to have this conversation with the disciples. Hey, man, I'm going to teach. I'm not going to preach today. Uh, he has this interesting conversation with the disciples, and he is engaging them about uh, not only the authority that he is placing in their laps or in their hands or uh, that he's empowering them with, uh, but he begins to tell them uh, that he gave them authority over every unclean spirit. He said, I'm giving you this authority that you may be able to cast out these spirits and that you would heal every disease and every affliction. So he says to them that I'm sending you out and I want you to proclaim what the Lord, that, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He goes on to have this conversation with them. He says, he gives them an assignment that is specific. He says, uh, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Amen. So this is the, this is the task or the, the, the charge that Christ has given uh, the disciples as he's sending them out. And I want to spend more time today uh, trying my best to have this conversation with you about the sheep and the wolves. Amen. I want to have a conversation about the sheep and the wolves. Uh, I'm still talking about uh, your, uh, your, you know, called by his authority, called with authority. Amen. But, but I really want you to understand this dynamic between uh, the sheep and the wolves. So he says to them, he says to the disciples, um, I'm going to skip down to verse 16. He says, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Uh, so be wise as serpents and uh, as innocent as doves. So he, he, he lets them know that I'm sending you out. So he calls them. He gives them the authority. He then gives them a charge and tells them what he wants them to do on their assignment. And then as he begins to talk about the assignment, he says to them, I want you to heal the sick. I want you to raise the dead. I want you to cleanse the lepers. I want you to cast out demons. And then he says to them, uh, you, re, uh, you, you receive without pain, give without pain. He says in verse 9, acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, uh, for two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborers deserve his food. So he begins to let them know that I'm sending you out and as he has this conversation, he wants them to know, I'm not sending you out that this may be for your gain. I'm sending you out for what you can deposit. Amen. I'm sending you out as sheep uh, among wolves, right? So I want you to, for a second, this is why I'm teaching, because I'm going to kind of jump back and forth through the text today and try to make it make sense. If you turn back to Matthew chapter 7, I want to read verse 15. He says, 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So he begins to talk about this dynamic. He says that there are false prophets that exist among you. And the thing that you have to realize is these false prophets are coming to you and they look a lot like sheep. But inwardly, they don't embody the spirit, the essence, or the character of a sheep. Amen? So, so, so he has already let us know that there are false prophets that exist among us, and these false prophets look like sheep, but their intentions and their heart's desire and their posture is not authentic to a sheep. And then he calls these 12 disciples and he empowers them with authority and he lets them know what they will be uh, required to do on their journey. And then he says to them in verse 16, I'm sending you out as sheep. So now we recognize that there are sheep that are out. They are moving. There are sheep that have authority. There are sheep that have responsibility. There are sheep that are prophesying. But the true identity of who they are is not based on what they look like, but based off of the character that they embody. Amen. This is the part that I, that I want us to understand because uh, oftentimes we're trying to figure out what differentiates us as believers. What differentiates you as the believer? What makes you different? How, how, how do you maintain who you are? Because this is what happens. Many times uh, we go out and because the Bible has already let us know that we are going out as sheep and we are going out among sheep and we are trying to capture the lost sheep for many people, all they see are the sheep. My goodness, I'm going to help us out, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, all we see are the sheep. And so, so there is uh, a responsibility that's given, and I think the beauty of what Jesus begins to do as he has this conversation with the disciples at the onset of sending them out for their assignment, he reminds them that he has given them authority. And I said this to you last week. I said, it's important to remember who has called you. Amen. It's important that you remember who has called you because if you remember who has called you, then you become familiar with the sound of their voice. Ooh. You become familiar with the sound of their voice, and it is imperative that we are able to identify the voice because it is the thing that uh, we will always respond to. We'll always respond to the, the voice of the Lord. We'll respond to the voice of the one that has called us. So it's imperative for the disciples, it's imperative for you to know who has called you, who has set you on assignment, who has given you authority, who has given you responsibility, and what your responsibility is with what you have been given. Now, you as the believer, you are much like the disciple in the sense that God has given you a responsibility. And yes, you are not going out the same way they did, but he has given you, he's empowered you with greatness. And he has given you this incredible uh, purpose and he has begun to map out destiny for you. And now with this assignment that comes out uh, based off of your gifts and your talents, God is saying that the reason that I've called you and the reason that I have empowered you and the thing that you are uh, required to do is to go out and to capture the lost sheep. And, and it, it's important for us to remember what Jesus says to the disciples as he begins to survey everything that was going on around him before he called them. He, he, he recognized, and I read this part to you last week in Matthew, uh, really at the end of chapter 9, he says, And Jesus went throughout all of the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and, pro and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. The Bible says here in, in 9 and 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them uh, because they were harassed and they were helpless. Who were they harassed by? Amen. I want to teach today. Who, who were they harassed by? They, they were being these, these sheep that, that Jesus begins to identify are being harassed by those that should uh, really be a reflection of a shepherd among the sheep. Amen. 
but, but, but the reality is they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And the Bible says, uh, like, like sheep without a shepherd. Uh, then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, uh, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly that the Lord of the harvest uh, will send out laborers into his harvest. He says, this is the prayer that I want you to pray. And then he calls them and he then sends them out into the harvest. And their job is to harvest the lost sheep. Amen. He says their job is to harvest the lost sheep, and now he's sending them out. But this is the part that I want to get to for you. Uh, the marketplace that God uh, uh, has, has placed you in, it requires that you are not only clear on who you are, but what you've been called to. And many of us are disciples. Many of us are those called sheep that God is using, and he has placed us in the marketplace with an assignment that we would reach the lost sheep. He tells the disciples that he is sending them out as sheep... Uh, uh, and not only in appearance, uh, but he's sending them out as sheep in their, in their spirit and in their posture. And his desire is for them to engage and to connect with those that are lost. Amen. And so when you are trying to figure out why God has called you, as you begin to identify uh, uh, the gifts and the talents that God has released in your spirit, when you understand what your true assignment is, it looks a lot like you going out as sheep among sheep to capture the lost sheep, but it's important that you don't lose your sense of identity as you are out among them. Amen. This is the problem that we have as believers we forget who called us, and we start mimicking those that look like us. Amen. It's a reason that Jesus starts this conversation, and he begins to tell the disciples uh, uh, that he's called them, that he's given them authority. This is the reason that he tells them, I want you to go out and work, and I don't want it to be about the money. Amen. That's what he says in verses 8 and 9 in chapter 10. I don't really want you to focus on money. And many of us, we go out on assignment in the marketplace spiritually, and it only becomes about what we get and not what we deposit. We go out in the marketplace, and we begin to release a word, and now we begin to think more highly of ourselves. And that's why the Bible says here in chapter 10, I'm going throughout the text because I really want you to understand it. He says here in 10 and 24, the disciple is not above his teacher, nor for the disciple to be like the teacher uh, and the servant like, he is, like, like his master. I, I don't need you to go out and be me. I need you to go out and be a reflection of me is really what Jesus begins to say to the disciples. It's not about what you gain, but what you deposit in the, in the, in the place that I've put you in. And the only thing that distinguishes you the only thing that makes you different because what we're trying to get, we're, what we're trying to capture are the lost sheep. Amen. We're trying to capture the lost sheep. And I really want you to follow along with me. There are already false prophets that are out that look like sheep. They are among sheep. I'm sending you out as sheep. And I'm sending you out so that you can go out and you can deposit my spirit in the places where it's needed. But if you lose sight of who called you, and if you lose sight of what your assignment is, you will go out and you will begin to mimic the behavior of the sheep that are already out there. You will start mimicking the behavior of the sheep or of the false prophets, or you will begin to mimic the behavior of the lost. And I don't want you to go out thinking about, oh, I look like them and so I should behave like them. I want you to go out realizing that I've called you with authority that you would have the ability to overcome in the places where I plant you. My goodness. So I'm trying to get you to realize that I'm planting you in a place for my glory. I'm planting you in a place for assignment. I'm planting you in a place so that you can actually do the work. And the only thing that makes you look different is the, is the spirit that you carry. Amen. It's the spirit that you carry. He says, he says there are false prophets that are out. Chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And, and many times we can begin to distinguish and identify these different segments of sheep that are out there because what they begin to do 
They begin to preach a message or they begin to deceive many of the believers by impersonating a shepherd and they try their best to uh, promote uh, all things that are common and all things that are easy. Amen. Amen. I know. I I know that we live in a time where it's more convenient to do it the way the masses are doing it, but the true identity of who you are is embedded in not only the posture that you carry, but the words that you will release. Mm. And so if we go out and we promote a message or we begin to promote a gospel that says uh, this is the wide way and this is the easy road, And you should take this wide gate and this easy road, and we can all get to the same destination. Uh, If if you start to believe this concept that we can all blend and walk through the door, then you are uh, wildly uh, misinformed. Because it's not what the Bible teaches as it relates to the path that God is leading us on. He says this wide gate and this open road and this easy way generally leads to destruction. Amen. I know, I know nobody wants to hear about destruction uh, because it makes us uncomfortable because we like the comfort of doing it our own way. And there is a level of discomfort that comes when I tell you that you can't do it the way you want to do it and still end up in the place that you say you want to end up in. And that's really the mix up. You say one thing, God, I want to be where you are. God, I want to be in your presence God, I want every blessing that you have for me. God, I want to showcase your glory. God, I want to sing your praises. God, I want to be in the midst of your presence. God, I want you to dwell right where I am. God, I want you to increase my territory. God, I want you to enlarge my span. I want you to enlarge my wingspan. I want you to allow me to soar like an eagle. We say all of these things, but then we live a lifestyle that is contrary to that very statement. I know what I said, God, but you know my heart. You know, my heart is really with you, God, even though even though everything that I'm doing right now is contrary to my spoken word. And what we only have in the place of faith is the word that you that you release, especially when you do it in the name of Jesus. Especially when you saying you're doing it for kingdom, all you got are the words that you speak. And so people start and, and, and this becomes the mix up. I'm trying to teach. This becomes the mix-up because now that you have gone out and now that you have said, I am sheep, now that you have identified as a believer, now that you tell people you are Christian, now that people think that they can come to you for a word, you have given them this illusion that you are one of God's chosen. And then when they come to you or when they see you on your social media or when they see you in person or when they see you in certain areas, none of what you do is a reflection of who you say you are. But you said you were the sheep. And so what God is trying to do as he calls the 12 disciples, he's trying to get them to realize, not only do I want you to identify uh, and, and go out. And, and the reason that he sends them out as sheep is because he, do, if, he doesn't want to send them out and then scare away everyone that he's trying to capture. Amen. Jesus, could, he could send them out as anything else. But he doesn't send them out to, to bring fear among the lost sheep because, because really the goal is that uh, it would be an inviting, welcoming experience. And this is for those of us who've been in church. Amen. This is for those of us who uh, we, 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 we invite new people uh, into our safe space. Uh, But sometimes our faces don't say that it's a safe space. Sometimes we are not a reflection, that this is a welcoming experience. Sometimes there's a lack of uh, authenticity that exists among believers. Sometimes we step into the church and we create a culture that makes people feel uncomfortable and it's uninviting and it's not welcoming. And so now, because we are supposed to be the sheep, but we don't do anything that reflects that we are God's chosen, it pushes people away. So Jesus is like, I'm sending you out to look like them but not be like them if you go out and you look like them it's welcoming to them to see somebody that looks like them but the goal is that you would go and that you would deposit the spirit of God in the place where he plants you but we go out and we get lost because we start to see our we start to see a reflection of us among us amen So he's like, yo, I don't want you to go out 
I, I don't want you to go out and, and, and try to make deposits and then it'd be about the financial gain because really what, what God had given them was something that was powerful when he, in, when he gave them authority. Really, he gifted them to be able to use their gifts however they wanted. Amen. Woo. Many of us have gifts that you can use however you want. But if we be honest and we be true, we recognize that God has gifted us, many of us, for his kingdom. Amen. I thought I'd get one. Where's my amen button? I thought I'd get one or two more amens right there. Amen. It, he, he, he gave you this gift for his kingdom. He gave you this gift for his glory. He gave you this gift that you would utilize it, that you would be able to uh, draw those that are lost because you look like them. And, and, and really what I try my best, and I had this conversation with Jay this week, we were talking about ministry, and I'm like, really, the goal is uh, to reach people that look like us but don't live like us. That's the goal. That's what, he was, that's, that's what he was saying here in the text. I'm really trying to get you to reach people who look like you but don't live like you. And if you go out and you live like those that aren't living like you, then you are just like them. And now I got to find some new people that I can send out so now I can capture all of y'all. And we get lost, and I'm just trying to help the lost. Amen. I'm just trying to help. Listen, I've been in that same boat, and many days I'm trying my best to live my life in a space that allows me to be a reflection of his glory and make a deposit. So what I say, I try my best to say what I believe God is saying so that I can leave his imprint in the place where he's planted me. Not mine. I'm flesh and bones. I want to leave my imprint. I want to leave his imprint. And so he says to them, I've gifted you. You can use this gift however you want. But my, but my prayer and my hope is that you would use what I've empowered you with for my glory that you might reach the lost. And he said, so, so you can differentiate which sheep you are dealing with. Amen. You can differentiate which sheep you are dealing with. And, other, and, and the other sheep can differentiate what sheep they're dealing with based off what they say and the spirit that they deposit in the place that they're in. I want to help you out because you, we, we listen to a lot of people, and a lot of people ain't giving us sound doctrine. We engage with a lot of sheep, and, and our engagement with a lot of sheep sometimes has the ability to rub off on us if we don't remember who we are and who called us. Sometimes if we are not careful, we end up among sheep and get lost in the midst of who we are supposed to be. And God is like, yo, this is the moment where the only thing that shows that you're standing out is what you say and how you live. So, so he says, I'm sending you out. And I don't really want y'all to be focused on, you know, he, 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 he lets them know that as you go out, and this is, the, this is the part where we get lost, because he told them, I'm going to send you out, and then there's going to be something that happens. And this is where we begin to become fearful. We become fearful, and uh, um, while wow, it's so powerful, we become fearful because he says this, and I'm going to read through this part quickly. Amen. And you can go back and read it for yourselves. Chapter 10. Right at the top of verse 16, he says, Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, uh, so be wise as serpent and innocent as doves. Amen. He's talking about their posture and their spirit. He's talking about their awareness and their wisdom. He's saying, if I send you out and you are aware, if I send you out and you remember the type of spirit that I want you to carry, then you won't get lost among all of the sheep that you are in the presence of. He says, then I want you to also be aware of men. For they will deliver over, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my name's sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, uh, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speaks. Uh, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And this part's so important because we get lost in these moments where we're trying to figure out if I have the ability to withstand the assignment where God is planting me. And this is God telling you that you have everything you need uh, to, to, to be um, 
successful in the assignment that uh, I've given you in this season. You have been equipped with everything you need that you need. Not only have you been empowered, but I don't even want you to worry about how you're going to engage the lost sheep because I'm going to tell you what to say in the moment. And I don't want you to worry about the naysayers because as he begins to talk about the men that want to hand you over and all these people that are in the synagogues, they want to discredit the assignment that God has given you. Amen. But I want you to remember that you are not disqualified. I want you to remember that you are God's chosen. I want you to remember that God has given you more than you need. I want you to remember that you bear his spirit. I want you to remember that you have been anointed. I want you to remember that your cup is running over. I want you to remember that it's not based off your own might. It's not based off your own intellect. It's not based off your own authority. But it is what God has given you in this season so that he can be glorified and that his name can be lifted, that he might draw all men unto him. Your assignment is greater than you. So don't be fearful in the moments when God starts planting you in the marketplace, when God starts putting you among other sheep. Don't think that you are going to get lost by nature, but if you remember the nature of the assignment and you remember the anointing that you carry and you remember the power that you've been given and you remember who you are attached to, you are attached to the Most High God. Jesus has anointed you for the assignment and he has tra- woo, he has transferred his spirit into you. The moment he called you, there was a spiritual transformation that took place. And that's why he tells them, I'm sending you out and you look different. Woo! I'm sending you out and your spirit is different. I'm sending you out and it doesn't matter what you say because I will give you what to say because you've been spiritually transformed. So in verse 26, he says, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. God ain't withholding anything from you. He begins to empower them. This is the part that's powerful. He empowers them for the assignment. He says this in verse 27. What I tell you in the dark. (laughs) Because this is the thing that we forget. And I hope you can catch this. There are dark places in your assignment. Oh, my God. Every place that you're going, every place that you're walking into, won't have light reflecting in it. If it had light already, you wouldn't be there. He says, what I tell you in the dark. And not only the the dark places that are visible, but sometimes we begin to war in spiritually dark places that make us uncomfortable. Woo. This word heavier than I thought it was going to be. And you end up in these dark moments and you end up in these dark places and you think that you're going to get your behind whooped in these places because you aren't necessarily prepared for the dark places. Because you thought it was going to be all glitz and glamour. You thought it was going to be all beauty and glory. You thought it was going to be all ease and convenience. That's the sign of false prophecy. It ain't going to be easy on the assignment. Nothing about the, nothing about the assignment of Jesus was easy. And I can assure you that as he was dragged from judgment hall to judgment hall, I can assure you that as they tried to imprison him, he had moments where he was in the dark, but he heard something in the dark place that he had to speak. Oh, my God. Ooh. 
in the light. Then he says, and what you, what you hear whispered, proclaim on the rooftops. There's so much here. Stay right there, cuz. Um, the, the, this message of sheep and wolves is, doesn't end between Matthew 7, Matthew 10, but it does carry over to Luke 10 and also John chapter 10. And something is said in John chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, I'm sorry, that I think is beautiful. Two things I have to read for you because I can't, I can't let you not hear it. I'm going to go to John chapter 10 first. Jesus begins to have this conversation and he reminds them that he's a good shepherd. And he says, because I'm still dealing with the sheep. He says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. The false prophet, that false prophet that looks like a sheep, he embodies, the false prophet embodies the spirit of the adversary. And that's why he cascades a message that leads to destruction. Hear me. If you come among the sheep, or the false prophet that's cascading a message that tells you wide and, and easy is the way to go. The Bible says that he's leading you down a path of destruction. But, but the Bible says here it's important that we remember that uh, that sheep that's also the false prophet is nothing more than a thief. And that thief has an assignment to steal from you ooh, the very thing that God has empowered you and gifted you with. And if you are not careful, you end up in a place where you are destroyed. Then he says, he says, I came that they, somebody say they, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But then he says this here, he says, he who is a hired hand, and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. And so God is like, yo, I'm just trying my best for you to really understand what I'm doing in your lives as a good shepherd. And I've planted sheep among you that I've called, that I've given authority to, and their direct assignment is to draw you, the lost, back to where the good shepherd is so that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Somebody say amen. He says here, and I'm going to close with this. You can, you can change if you want, cuz. Um, he says... After he sent them out, they came back. And I want, the, I want you to understand the beauty of this last part. He said, I sent out the 12 and I sent 72 more. And they all came back. Amen. Somebody say, I return. I return back to the one who called me. And the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the, dip, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. I want you to know that nothing will hurt you on this journey that God has placed you on. I know that you are out among 
other sheep and some of the sheep are lost and some of the sheep are have the spirit of ravenous wolves uh, but I want you to understand that on the assignment that God has given you you will return back to the safety net of the father you'll be back right right where right where you started in him so I want you to know that as you are on assignment, that you don't lose your sense of identity, that you don't allow fear to overtake you, that you don't start mimicking the wrong behavior, but that you go and you leave an imprint of his spirit wherever he has placed you. And know that as you continue on, not only will you have life more abundantly, but he says, that, he says this to them. He says, and then you can rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want my name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be written. I want to be remembered in heaven. And I know you're out. You're among all the sheep. And you're hanging out with all the people that look like you. But God has made you different. Amen. You are a royal priestly hood. You are a chosen generation. You have a beautiful assignment in him. And this is your moment and this is your season to be exactly who God has called you to be. So this is the call to you today. Amen. We offer Christ to you. This is, this is our appeal to you. This is our hope that you would be a partaker of this glorious experience of faith. And many of you have been sitting on the outside saying, I kind of know that I could, be, I could be a different sheep. Amen. I kind of know that I felt lost for a while. And so this is our appeal to you today. That you no longer have to be lost, but you can truly be found in him. You can be seen by him. And that's what we all want. I talk to people all the time. I counsel people all the time. And, and, and the thing that begins to echo out of the voice of many is, I'm re I really just want to be seen in the relationships that we have and the friendships that we have. It's like, yo, I want to be seen. You, do you see me for who I am? You see my value? And I want you to know that God sees you. He sees your value. He sees who you are. And this is the moment where if you say, I no longer want to live like this, that you can come because as he sent the disciples out to draw the lost sheep, the goal was that they looked like the disciples that were sent out, that their spirits changed, their posture changed, their response changed. No shortcuts. It's one path, one way. It's a narrow gate. It's a narrow lane. It's not a, it's not a wide gate. And I know that I will make this appeal and it will fall on deaf, deaf ears and, and many will say, oh, not yet, I'm not ready. And, and I know you, you toil, you tussle and toil with it because you say, well, I'm not, I'm not who I want to be. I'm not who I want to be with God yet. And God is like, you're never going to be that without me. You keep waiting to get yourself together. Let me get myself together. It's a song that says it. Let me get myself together. And I've concluded that if you could do it on your own, you would have already done it. But the indication that you need something greater than you is that you've not changed yet. The indication that you should submit, you should submit to something higher than you is that you've not transformed your life independently. So what will it take? What does God have to say to you that today would be your day? My prayer right now is that God would begin to show you a vision of who you will be after you start walking with him. That you will start getting a new vision. That God would give you a new motion picture of your life. That you would see yourself doing all these amazing things in him. Whatever song you want to sing, that you would sing it before the Lord. Whatever, whatever word you want to release, whatever thing you want to write, that you would do it. And that he would put his, uh, he's been on me with this imprint. He would put his imprint on you.
that he would bless you and that it would be a never-ending cascading blessing will you will you accept Christ today will you accept the great I am will you accept Emmanuel God with us will you accept Jesus our Lord and Savior will you accept him today Will you invite him into the place of your heart that you can be transformed? Will you invite him into the place of your heart that you can be transformed and your declaration changes? What did I tell you? The sign of who you are is evident in how you move and what you say. And now I say something different. Jesus is Lord. And that declaration alone changes everything. I invite you into my heart. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I invite you into my heart that you would transform me, that you would make me over, that you would break up the hard place, and that this would be a great place for your deposit. Make an imprint. Make an impression. Put a smile on my face, change my heart, change my words. Jesus, Lord, Savior, you are everything. I believe it. I confess it. I'm different because of you. Amen. 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 We offer Christ to you. Listen, if you.